Hey everybody, I'm Jason over here at Interstate Truck Driving School and I'm going to help you with the pre-trip inspection simulators and just explain to how to do it. So let's look over here. So things that you're going to need to know, these are the buttons that pop out right here. It's a real steering wheel, real seat, as real as we can get, which is really nice. Accelerator, we've got the brake, key positioning right here. And then very, very important is this, this is the status button that you're going to be pressing quite a few times. So make sure you know where that is. Now you're going to need your username and password. And you're going to say, well, where do I find that? You go into your email that we sent you right away when you registered, that's called student portal login. And that'll give you your username and your password. It's the same one that you use when you come in each day and when you log out. It is case sensitive though. So make sure that you, if it says capital, use a capital. And then the password is usually a bunch of numbers, but it's whatever we sent you in that email. Now you're gonna use this keyboard to enter your username and password. And so I'm gonna do that right now with mine. And so press the shift to get the capital and you'll be able to see the username. Mine is Billy Bob. And then my password. Now that's secret. Don't tell anyone on that one. So we're going to put that in there and you can't see that. So no one else can use your username and password. Now we do keep track of how long you're on here and how well you do, but it's effort is what we're looking for here. So it's attempting and doing it over and over and over. No one's expecting you to do this right, right away. It's a school. We learn, we get better as we do it. So, <clears throat> When you get to this screen, you have a choice of guided practice or practice test. The first many, many times that you do it, you're going to use guided practice. And you're going to use your um, finger to move the mouse like this. Now, some things that could be wrong is if it's in manual. Only the Sim 4, the one way back in the corner, can do manual. So if it's in manual on an automatic Sim, that's not going to work. So make sure it's clicked automatic right here. Then you go over to guided practice and you press this button right here and that's going to load the screen. Now when it's loaded up, these buttons have to be out. It has to be in neutral and you have to have your foot on the brake and the key has to be all the way to the left in the off positioning. Okay. So one thing about the brake is that it can get too soft or too hard. When it's been pressed many times, it'll go all the way to the floor like that. That's not good. So there's this little button right here, which you can press to get more air into the brake. But you can put too much air in the brake. Now I can't press it at all. And the computer doesn't even register that I'm pressing it. So then you press it this way and it lets a little, bear, a little air out. That's the key, a middle ground between being too hard and too soft. So you have to be able to press it easily, but not just go all the way to the floor. So that's one of the keys is to have brake where you can um, press it. Now, when I press this brake, <clears throat> it's gonna tell me what to do. It says, start the vehicle. So I use the key, put it on and then start it up, okay? This is telling, telling where the key positioning is. There's the RPM right there. Now, always be looking for the arrows. Now, I am going to have headphones on. When I do this, I'll put my headphones on and it's gonna tell me what to do. I'm not gonna have the headphones on for you guys, but you would have your headphones on. So it's gonna tell you everything that it says on the screen up here. It says, build your air pressure to 125. Well, how do you do that? You press the accelerator with your foot and that shows the accelerator here and that puts air into the air tanks. So this is the air gauge. Always look for the arrows if you're confused because that's going to tell you what it wants you to do. So then it's going to get to the point where it says that they're skipping ahead to the end essentially is what it's saying. Up here on the screen, it's going to read all this saying that <clears throat> in the real pre-trip inspection, you would be doing the windshield wipers, the heater and such, 
But on the simulator, we are skipping ahead to the end. So I'm acknowledging that I'm skipping ahead to the end. So after it gives you instructions, you do it. It says release the trailer brakes. So you would push the red knob in. That's what you do. Put it into drive. I'm essentially just doing exactly what it's telling me to do. But I'm waiting for it to tell me what to do before I do it. So it'll give you the instructions, then you do it. It'll say it in your headphones. It only gives you 10 seconds to do each thing, okay? So I take my foot off the brake, give it a tiny bit of throttle, back to the brake, and I say my tractor brake is holding. Now it says put it back in neutral. So I have to do it. It gives you 10 seconds to do each thing after it reads the instructions. So now it says pull the trailer brake back out. So that's what I do. Push the tractor brake back in. I'm just following instructions. It says place the vehicle in drive. Put it in drive. So now I'm going to check my trailer brakes, but I, I let it give me the instructions first in my headphones. Then it gives me 10 seconds in which to do it. Take the foot off the brake, tiny bit of throttle, back to the brake, and then I'm going to put it back in neutral. Place the vehicle in neutral, put foot on brake. That's what I just did. So now it says to release the trailer brake. So you'd say my trailer brake is holding, my connection is secure. Now I'm checking the service brake. So it says put it in drive. Put it in drive. You take your foot off the brake. It says release the foot brake. So that's what I do. And then I'm going to drive ahead at five miles an hour. So obviously I have to give it throttle. This is the speedometer right here where the wheels are. Press the brake and you say it didn't pull to the left or right. Pedal is firm. Now it's telling me to put it in neutral and then turn off the motor. When you turn off the motor, you go all the way off and then put it to on, but not start. So this is the key on this part, is you need to keep your foot still. That's the hard part. If I move my foot at all, I am going to lose more than four pounds of pressure in the system. Because remember, I turn the truck off, I put it back on, but it's not running. So the air compressor is not running. So that means if I move my foot, my air gauge is gonna go down more than four pounds. And when we invented this, it's brilliant that we made it air break uh, with air because this helps you practice keeping your foot still. You'd say, well, Jason, how hard is it to keep your foot still? It's harder than you think. So this is what you need to practice is not moving your foot. And so this is telling me how much pressure I'm putting on the brake. Um, and so you have to keep your foot completely still for the one minute. <clears throat> now on the screen, it's telling me, I would tell the examiner, my fan is off, my radio's off, my window is down, I'm listening outside for air leaks, and I'm watching the gauge to make sure I do not lose more than four pounds of pressure. So that's what you should go through your head and I actually like to verbalize it so you practice doing that so when you're doing the test it's not like the first time you've ever done it. Uh, the simulator doesn't make you say it. The simulator can't hear you talk but you should do it yourself. You should say these things. <clears throat> like when you're pressing the status button it's like you saying something so I would recommend that you actually say it. So now I should think ahead to what I'm going to do when it hits 60. The computer is timing me for 60 seconds. When it hits 60, I press this button, I say, I did not lose more than four pounds of pressure. Next, it's gonna do the low air warning signal. It says, pump the brakes until the low air warning signal begins. So I go on and off the brake. The key is that I go all the way off the brake. So I'll show you how to do it wrong. This is how you do it wrong. If you see this, this is not going all the way to the bottom. It needs to go all the way off and then on. That takes the air down in the air tanks. It's called fanning the brakes. That's the key. So you're gonna wait until this light comes on. And I'll just give you a little hint here. After it comes on, you need to pump it at least one more time because when you quit pumping it, the air actually will go up a little bit more. And so, see, right now, you need to pump it at least one more time. 
then it goes to the next screen and you hold it and in your headphones it's saying the low air warning system is working properly because it came out between 60 and 80 and it's going to tell you to acknowledge that and tell the examiner that it came out at 65 and so that's what you're doing you're pressing this button came out at 65. Next, we have the emergency brakes popping out or applying between 20 and 40. The key is that you have to wait until all of them pop out. We have the two real ones and we have the two on the screen. If you just do the ones, so if they don't all pop out, the, uh, yeah, and I'm pressing the brake again, on and off the brake, completely off it. Now there's one popped out on the screen and here, but you have to have them all pop out. If three of the four popped out, it's not gonna let you advance to the next part. So you have to keep on doing it until they all pop out. Okay, now they did. They all popped out here and here. So in my headphones, it's telling me the emergency brakes popped out or applied between 20 and 40, and that's good because it has to be between 20 and 40, but you have to tell the examiner the exact pressure that it popped out at. And if you look at the gauge, it's at 25. So you have to tell the examiner, popped out at 25. At that point, it's gonna say, congratulations, you did it correctly. Now, if you did it wrong, <clears throat> absolutely fine. You're not gonna do it right every time. So what you do is you move over with your arrow, you go to this side, you hold this button, and you go down and you scroll down and you can see that I have green check marks on each little step. That's because I did it correctly. If I did it wrong or the computer sensed that I did it wrong, then it would have a red arrow there. And so then you just know what you did wrong and you know to do it different for next time. Now we register this and we see how much effort that you're putting into it. If you do it <clears throat> wrong over and over, that's okay. You learn from it. Sometimes these little things are quirks that can make it difficult to pass it. Try not to get frustrated. That's why we have only 30 minute appointments on these things is because sometimes it is difficult to learn to do this. So it's repetition, doing it over and over. Now, let me just tell you one other thing. So when you're done with this, you click menu, and then it goes back to the home screen. When it goes back to the home screen, I would recommend that you do the guided practice many, many, many times before you do the practice test. Because when you do the practice test, it doesn't give you instructions anymore. Now, you can do it a lot quicker because you don't have to listen to the instructions before you do it, but you need to know the process because it doesn't tell you what to do. So you have to have it memorized. So do the guided practice many, many times before you do the practice test. One other thing I wanted to mention is when you're on this screen, don't click this over here because that exits out of the whole program. And we don't want to exit completely out. When you're done, you would just do log out. That's what you're going to do. And then you let the next person do it. Now, let me just tell you one more thing. I'm going to load up the screen one more time because this is something that happens occasionally you have to have these buttons out you have to have um the key all the way off and it has to be in neutral when you load it occasionally i don't know if you saw that but it went to drive when we first loaded it sometimes that happens it's not a big deal you can just go over here and click neutral and it'll go back into neutral and then it'll work or if you if it's in drive like this you'll get an, an error on the message and just like this it'll say out of time not a big deal all you have to do is go back up to the top exit and it brings you back to the screen it says right here you didn't do the safe start correctly it's not your fault sometimes that happens it's just a little quirk in the machine so then we just reload it not a big deal we do it over as the second time and almost always the second time that we do it, it's going to load up and it's going to be in the correct position. So please don't let that be frustrating. We're not going to hold that against you on your statistics. See, this time it worked. It was in neutral this time. So that's one of the things that can happen. 
So, and that's repetition. Just do it over and over again. So if you have any questions, watch this video again or ask the front staff and we will um, get you help with this. But it is a very, very useful tool and it's very, very important. And this is gonna help you pass the CDL exam. Thanks everyone, I'm Jason, Interstate Truck Driving School. Have a safe day.